Hey guys, welcome back. I'm Megan Campbell and this is Megan Stuff. So in my last video I mentioned that I was working on my first uh, two-sided carved design um, for the CNC. I wanted to add that in that video but unfortunately I ran out of time. So for those of you who may be interested, um, I thought I would make a short video showing you the process. So I could have just downloaded some uh, random model to test out this uh, two-sided carving concept. But seeing as I have a bit of a background in 3D modeling, uh, I thought I would come up with some kind of uh, basic design myself. So using Blender, I came up with this uh, really simple model of a spoon, which I think would be a really uh, nice and easy project to start with. So I should probably be making my first model out of some um, kind of cheap scrap wood. But I do have quite a bit of teak off cuts lying around here. So I thought I may as well just go ahead and um, use this. Now I'm choosing this teak specifically because according to some of the research that I've done, because teak is such a hard and dense wood, it is fairly food safe because it doesn't easily um, absorb liquids and stuff, making it perfect for um, a wooden spoon, for example. Now with the version of Vectric which I use, which is a uh, VCarve Pro, I uh, can only import one um, STL model at a time. So I couldn't bring in um, one model of the spoon and multiply it uh, to fit on this piece of wood. So I had to go back to Blender and I made a couple of copies that would fit on this particular piece of wood, which turned out to be four spoons. Um, and I exported all four of them as one STL file, which is what I brought into um, VCAF Pro. And that is what I'll be using to uh, work out my tool paths. So before I start doing that, I'm just going to mill this block of wood down to the required size the thickness of this block of wood isn't constant it's around uh, 24 on the one side um, to about 26 on the other side in my software I've calculated for a thickness of 23 so I'm going to take this quickly and I'm going to run it through my thickness planer a couple of times to try and get it to um, a thickness of 23 millimeters so let's go Okay, so here's the piece that I milled up. This is about as close to 23 millimeters as I'm going to get, so it should do the trick. Um, now, off camera, I also went ahead and I milled up this piece. The reason for that um, is twofold, I guess. Um, if I mess this one up, um, then I'll have a backup piece to work with. Alternatively, if this one turns out perfectly um, and I want to make some more spoons, then uh, I'll have another piece uh, already milled up so that I can go ahead and do that. So with all that said, uh, let's jump into VCarve quickly and I'll show you what I've got going on there. Okay, apologies. I don't have OBS installed on this machine yet, so um, hopefully this will suffice. Um, so this is what I have um, at the moment. These are the four spoons that I want to put on that piece of wood. Uh, now, I've gone through the whole process of creating tool parts here, and I did run into some issues, but I will cover those issues um, in a moment. So as you can see, the 2D view looks like this. When you bring a, a model in, it um, brings it in as a kind of an alpha map or something. Um, and then I went ahead and I added um, the tabs in separately as tabs work a little differently with carving tool paths than it does with flat um, 2D tool paths. So um, as you can see without tabs uh, these spoons are not going to be supported anywhere when you um, uh, go to cut them out. So I added in these tabs and then uh, as you can see over here um, I've got a hole or two circles at the top of the bottom here in uh, opposite corners and these are going to be my uh, locating pins. So before I cut the top um, out, I'm going to cut those locating holes and then when I turn the piece around, um, I'm going to cut those locating holes into uh, my spoil board. That way I can easily locate the piece so that I can um, go ahead and uh, carve the other side. Now the problem that I ran into, um, as you can see over here, if I run all of the tool paths, preview tool paths, Cutting my locating holes. So some of you can probably already see what the problem is here. Obviously I'm trying to cram too much uh, into this little block of wood. 
so as you can see it cuts past the edges of the wood over here so that means that there's going to be no support um, these two spoons are only going to be supported by the two tabs at the end and the one tab in the middle so that means when I turn it around uh, which I'll show you now and I carve the other side it's going to carve right through and then you're going to have one long piece with very little support so when it goes to do the finishing pass there's a good chance that it's going to um, either knock these pieces out or it's going to deflect in such a way that it doesn't carve it properly let's just check it two-sided so um, as you can see over here if I cut it out with the current tool path um, there's going to be almost no support for these spoons which is obviously a big problem so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to blender and I'm just going to export uh, two spoons and then I'm going to space them evenly um, on this piece of wood and I'm going to separate them so that the spoons aren't connected like this and then hopefully uh, that'll do the trick and if everything works out and I want to cut more luckily I have that um, extra piece of wood that I milled down so then I can go ahead and cut um, as many more as I like so I'm going to go and um, re-export my model from Blender uh, bring it in here, recalculate the tool paths and I'll check back with you then okay so here it is uh, two spoons uh, this leaves me a lot more breathing room for my tool paths um, so let's quickly have a look at the tool paths um, okay that's the bottom side here's the top side so let's preview all of the tool paths let's just reset it so the top side uh, first going to cut the location holes roughing pass and finishing pass let's jump over to the back side preview all these two paths okay so there, as you can see it's going to cut uh, straight through all around the spoon leaving the tabs in place exactly how we want it so those are my tool paths worked out i'm going to save them put them on the memory stick and uh, we can get cutting okay so here are the tool paths as i've created them naming conventions are really short here only because my controller can only show me a really short name so i have to abbreviate them as short as possible so that i can see uh, a full name on the controller so i'm going to start off with uh, um, sp top which is spoon top r for roughing um, which is also going to include the two locating holes into the top of the material um, after that I'll do spoon top uh, finishing which is this one um, once I'm done with that I'll take the material off then I'll run this tool path which is pocket spoil board uh, once that's done I'll do spoon bottom roughing and then spoon bottom finishing so let's eject that and get started I've set my speed a little bit slower for this because this is an extremely hard wood but uh, just to be safe I'm going to start it off at um, 
70% of the speed that uh, the toolpath has been set for. If I see there aren't any problems, um, I'll move that up uh, while the job is cutting. Before I forget, I've got to put it on the extractor and the water cooling. Okay, I got the spoons cut out and generally I must say they look really nice. The surface finish, um, especially on the flat parts, is really, really smooth. 
Um, so smooth that I don't even think that it really needs much sanding. There are, however, a couple of issues here and there. Um, as you can see on these pictures that I'm going to show you now, um, some of the edges look a little bit jagged. And I think that has to do with the fact that uh, when you bring the STL model into VCAR, it seems like it does pixelate a bit. So when VCAR is busy uh, calculating the tool parts, it does seem to uh, struggle a bit with some of the edges. Um, now, not all of the edges. Uh, the edge on the other side um, looks fine. I think these ridges may also be uh, compounded a little bit uh, because of the fact that I'm using a uh, tapered ball nose bit, which means that uh, the deeper the bit plunges, the wider the cut gets. Um, so that could be why I'm getting a little bit more of these artifacts. That's not the end of the world. I'm going to have to take out the belt sander anyway to clean up the um, tabs that are left behind. So while I'm busy doing that, I can just... Uh, clean up those edges and then um, with some hand sanding I'm going to go over it probably up to maybe about a 600 or 800 grit and then they should be ready for finish although I do think before I put uh, some finish on them I may as well go ahead and engrave them seeing as I have a laser machine so let me go ahead and clean these up and then we can uh, engrave them Okay, so it's the next day. I left these to soak overnight. Uh, so let's drain off this linseed oil, wipe them down and see what they look like. Okay, there we go guys, it's done and I must say, I think it turned out really nicely. And I know this isn't groundbreaking stuff, these are just two spoons. And I have to admit this whole process is quite a lot of setup for uh, just two humble spoons. But the whole reason for making these is to gain some experience and hopefully the knowledge and experience that I have picked up through making these spoons will definitely carry over when I go to do a lot more complicated projects, which I'm definitely planning on doing. So I made these to be roughly the size of a teaspoon. So I'm not exactly sure what a person could use this for. I'm sure you could use it as a coffee scoop or a sugar spoon. But anyway, I still think they look really nice. I really like the grain and the teak. I do have a whole bunch of rosewood offcuts here as well. So I may go ahead and try this uh, carving with some of that. Another thing I may also do is um, enlarge this design to make a really big spoon that you could use for um, stirring a 
large pot or something. I think this uh, shape that I came up with will lend itself nicely to that. But don't worry, I won't be making another video of another spoon. Uh, the next time I do a uh, two-sided carving, it's definitely going to be something uh, a little bit more substantial than this. So this was just a proof of concept and uh, testing the basic workflow of a two-sided carving. And with that in mind, I think it turned out really well. So I mentioned in my last video, and I'll also mention it here, I know I just skipped by the design and the software aspect of this project quickly, but if there's anyone who would like me to do um, some more in-depth videos of importing the models into VCarve and creating the toolpaths and stuff like that, and perhaps even the design of the spoons in Blender, you're more than welcome to drop those requests down in the comments below, and I will most definitely consider that. So with all that said, once again, thank you very much for watching. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, go ahead and hit that thumbs up button if you'd like to see more of this type of content go ahead and subscribe and as always till next time keep making stuff